In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the cash offer formula so you don't lose money on your real estate investment flips, and we're getting started right now. Hey there, my name is Ian Flanagan and I've been investing and selling real estate for over 15 years. So if you're looking to learn more about real estate investing strategies and also how to build wealth with your real estate license, be sure to hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you a calculation that you can run that will cover all these expenses very, very quickly. And throughout this video, if you have any questions that come up, just type them in the comment section below and we'll go from there. So here we go, we're gonna dive right into this. This is the cash offer formula. Now this can vary depending on what your experience level is did you really need to know how all the numbers break down so you can calculate offers and not lose money but obviously if you're advanced and you've been doing this for quite some time you're gonna be able to know these numbers and kind of dial them in and figure out exactly where you need to add more expenses and actually back off some so let's get into this now in my market we actually make offers on properties that the ARV is around 350,000 so we do this every single week so this is the example that we're gonna use after repaired value of 350,000 now you need to make sure that you dive into the MLS and actually verify this data before you start running your numbers. And we like to do a little bit of a conservative approach, meaning not the highest, but once we get the properties done, we typically take them over market to try to capture a little bit more profit, but make sure that you're running your comps on a conservative, verified price per square foot that houses will sell at that price. $350,000 is where we're gonna start today. So the ARV is 350,000. Now I like to run a calculation of the ARV times 75% minus the cost of repair. So that 75% is just a basis for you to start. You wanna make sure that you know exactly where that 25% is going. So let's break this down a little bit. So we always try to run our numbers on a 15% net profit. You may think that's a lot, or you may not think that's a big enough profit. You have to target somewhere, you have to have a basis to start. So 15% is what we're trying to net after expenses on this particular deal. We write in a 6% broker fee, and why do we do 6%? I'm an agent. I properties at the full maximum 3%. I want to capture as much stock out of my company as possible, but you can list them for 1%. There are flat fee listing services I'm sure that are in your market. So run your numbers accordingly, but I just want to go ahead and put a 6% broker fee in there because you want to offer the other brokers 3% to bring qualified buyers to you to close those deals faster. But that number can swing dramatically. I just wanted to put 6% in there as a basis. Now 2%, I like to run a 2% calculation because it'll cover the closing cost on the front end and the back and when we sell. So I'm gonna combine both transactions in this 2%. That's gonna include title, escrow, taxes. I like to run everything on a six month period when I do the calculations for the taxes, the expenses. If you are borrowing capital, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment, make sure you know exactly where those numbers are going so you can calculate for them so you don't miss it. Carrying costs. Now this can vary as well. Um, this could be your insurance policy. This could be your utilities or any other recurring expense that you may have on the property. I like to write in 1%. It just gives me a number as a basis. $3,500 is a pretty big number for carrying costs. So that number could be 2,000, it could be 1,000. Having a number in there to justify where that 25% is, is very important. And then a buffer, a 1% buffer. Every single transaction that I've ever been in, it always goes over budget. Rarely do they come under budget. You wanna have a calculation in there just to have a line item of some extra money that can actually go into the deal and kind of help you get the deal to the finish line. And that's where a lot of investors make a big mistake is they don't really calculate their numbers properly, nor or do they know exactly all the expenses that come up in a transaction that can come back to bite you at the very end of the deal? So now let's move over to the repairs. This is another big one that I see a lot of investors make a big mistake on. Now the repair cost. Obviously the higher the price point, you're gonna move into a luxury market, maybe 500,000 or 700,000 or a million. This number is gonna swing dramatically. It costs more money to do luxury property. So I like to run an $18 per foot times the square foot of the property. Most of the houses that are in my market Market, we're trying to stay at 2,500 feet and less because those expenses can really start running away from you when you really get into bigger houses. 3,000, 5,000 square foot houses, it just takes a lot more money for all the materials and the labor to get those properties repaired. But 2,500 square feet times $18 per foot will give you a pretty solid repair budget for your cosmetics. And that's the flooring, the paint, the fixtures, anything and everything that you need inside the house. That could be new granite, that could be new sinks, that could be new cabinet faces. It really just depends on the condition of the cabinets, whether or not you're gonna rip them all out or you're just gonna paint them and put new doors on them. $18 per foot will always give you a solid ballpark of what you can do the cosmetic repairs on. Hey, stop for a second. If you're getting value out of this video, do me a huge favor. 
tap that like button and leave me a comment so this video will be magnified and others can find it as well. Back to the video. Now the next one here, the big six. I call this the big six because these are additional expenses that you will have on top of your cosmetics. Now the roof, the foundation, the electrical, the HVAC, the plumbing, and the windows. The windows can be a really big ticket item. If you haven't done a lot of properties, these expenses will eat you alive and can really throw off your profits and a lot of times you'll actually lose money on the transaction. So you wanna take the cosmetic repairs and then you also wanna take the big six. Make sure you have licensed professionals give you bids on this. So in this example, this is something that I typically see on all the properties that we do. We usually have a little bit of foundation, so I have 4,000 for foundation, 2,000 for plumbing, and let me tell you, the plumbing can be the one line item that you miss that will eat you alive every single time. One of the last properties that we did, Midcrest, we had $8,000 in plumbing, surprise prizes because when we lifted up the foundation it cracked the cast iron in a couple different spots so we had to pay $500 to have the plumbers come out do the static testing then run the cameras through the lines and find the leaks then we had to have an excavation crew dig under the house cut the pipes out replace it and then once we did all that we had additional leaks so the plumbing can be one of those deal killers you just want to make sure you mitigate that and budget for it so that would be an additional $7,000 so if you took the ARV of $350,000 times 75% minus the cost cost of repairs. So you got $45,000 in cosmetics that can include everything, including landscaping as well. And then $7,000 in the big ticket items that would land you at an offer price of 210,000. But let's take this a step further. If you have cost of capital, almost everybody has cost of capital until you really have been doing this a long time. Then you're operating with strictly cash. Your cost of capital can eat you alive as well. So you need to, you need to budget for that. So let's say for example, you're going to make an offer of 210,000, but you know, you're going to borrow the money if you're borrowing it from a hard money lender you may pay up to 10 percent interest so you want to calculate that on a six month period because every single month you're going to have seventeen hundred dollars going out the door let's say it takes you six months to get this property done you're going to have an additional ten thousand dollars in interest expenses now when you run your calculation for the after repaired value you want to really look at how fast our properties moving in the market is our property selling on the first weekend are they selling in 30 days on average are they selling in 45 days on average so you have to calculate your time frame that you're actually going to buy the property, renovate the property, and then get it on the market and then get it under contract. So that's why I like to do a six month period because it really gives you plenty of time to budget because most properties are going to take three, four, five months. Sometimes it takes six, sometimes they take eight months, but it's really important to calculate your cost of capital. And if you do feel it's going to take six months to do the property, then you want to back out an additional $10,000 that would get you to your maximum offer of $199. This particular example right here are almost the identical numbers that we did on the Midcrest flip. We ARV'd the property at 350,000. We actually paid 210, but we had $60,000 in repair costs to get the deal to the finish lines. So once you calculate all your expenses, you take your ARV times 75%. I'll walk you through exactly what that 25% is with a 15% profit. And just know that number, that potential profit is diminishing every single day. You have taxes, you have insurance, you have utilities, you have labor expenses, you have material costs every single day, you have a diminishing return. So that means you got to get this property done fast. You got to get it to the finish line, make sure it's ready to go, put it on the market and sell it quickly. And here's the fastest way to take all these numbers and run a calculation very, very quickly. If you took the ARV times 57%, that would get you at 199. So if you know you're borrowing money, if you know it's going to take you six months to do the deal, you can pretty much factor in all these expenses and just quickly in a second, make a fast offer on a property and know exactly that you have everything covered. Well, there you go. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. So get out there, go crush it, make some offers, flip some houses and make some money. Until next time, I'll see you on the next video.